check one, two. I just realized the music is quite quiet. Hopefully you're hearing my voice over the music just fine. I'll be getting started. Well, it says two minutes and 55 seconds. We'll see if that comes to pass. Hello everyone, welcome to a slightly impromptu Saturday afternoon Coding Train Twitch stream. Uh, it's nice to be here with you today. It's a very warm and sunny day here in the Hudson Valley of New York. I am in full-on t-shirt mode. I'm a little low energy. We'll see if that picks up as we go. Uh, I've been very busy, oddly, for the net last couple of weeks and will continue to be for the next couple of weeks. Busy with things that have kind of taken me away from the coding train proper, although not the sort of core mission, I suppose, of... Uh, outreach and teaching and code for everyone around the world. So lots of things going on. Um, today I have one goal, one goal in mind for this entire stream, which will be at least an hour, probably longer, but um, not the uh, original plan of kind of doing an all day stream about what's the topic, the new Coding Train website. So I wanna introduce the new Coding Train website to you, show you a bit about how it works, and essentially offer an opportunity for anybody who's watching to contribute back to the Coding Train website. Um, and the launch, the official launch of the Coding Train website will happen on June 14th is the target date because that is the date of processing community day in Copenhagen, where I will be doing some sort of demo workshop talk like thing uh, and showing the Coding Train website. Let's take a look at the chat. Um, um, yeah, Simon, I actually started a little bit early, which is very unlike me, but I'm just like, I'm here. The internet has a green light on it. The camera is on. The lights are on. Let me just start because who knows how long I'm going to last here today in terms of energy and focus. 
I'm trying to think if there are other important announcements and things I would like to talk about. Let me pull up Discord here briefly because that will remind me because, um, and I'm going to open up my computer here in a second. Just give me a minute. Um, okay, where am I? Uh, let's do this. You press a little button here. Press another little button here. Press this button here and then go to the announcements channel and I am ready. All right. Bringing in my computer screen here. Oh, no, no, no. What just happened there? Okay. There we go. Sorry, there was a little bit of an extra camera feed covering up this view. All right. So let's go through these now. So first of all, um, I'm like sort of obsessive. And uh, one of the things that I try to do with the Discord server, which you're looking at right now, I believe if you type in, let's see if this works. Um, if you type into the chat, exclamation point discord it will give you yeah there you go the link to the discord server itself in case you're not in the discord server um, if you're new to the discord server you'll want to emoji react to the code of conduct and then move on over to the announcements channel which is what i'm showing you here so i try to not use the at everyone tag often i use it my sort of goal is to use it once a month to sort of summarize it's kind of like a bit of a newsletter a monthly newsletter so here are the things going on. The Coding Train website has been a big project, a long time in the making. I'm basically ready to spend this entire stream showing it to you, to looking at how it works, fixing up some things, and um, soliciting your contributions. Um, so that's going to be the main topic of today. Um, processing Community Day Copenhagen. Oh, you know, I've left a whole set of lights off in this room, but it's fine. I think you can see me and I look just fine. <laughs> um, Processing Community Day Copenhagen is happening. I will be there in Copenhagen, in person. Um, not in bare feet, which is what I am today, but I don't know if I could, ah, there we go. <laughs> Get a foot on camera there, that was rough. Oh man, I think I pulled something. All right, Discord server is moving to a new help system. So the old channels are back. Uh, tomorrow I will be on the Burbs Nest, which is Sable Wraith. Why can I not remember how to say that? Uh, Sable Rafe's um, uh, channel, so tune in to that. Um, I am sort of oscillating back and forth between streaming on Twitch and streaming on YouTube, but I am not posting the archives of the Twitch streams to the main Coding Train channel. So if you want to check out those, there's a link to that here. And then uh, Mathieu. Coding train video editor, the hardest working coding video editor in the business, is hard at work this weekend trying to somehow assemble together a full video of me coding the wave function collapse algorithm from start to finish, which took place over at least three live streams, probably 10 hours of time, into what is now approximately 90 minutes long. So this is going to be a real experiment, the thing, and I, I don't... Maybe I shouldn't say too much in advance, but I'm very curious to hear from people um, just the feedback on this because I am thinking about, in, uh, so I always want to do coding challenges where I program something from start to finish. If it can be contained within, let's say 20 or 10 minutes to 45 minutes, maybe an hour. That's kind of been my maximum mental uh, length for a coding challenge video. I think projects like when I did the autoencoder project over a set of live streams, wave function collapse is another example of this. I'm thinking maybe it makes more sense for me to do summary videos. So still do the project over long periods of time. The live stream archive will be there, but then write more of a script to summarize what happened and just highlight the key points, how the algorithm works and release the code with it. So I don't know, uh, not happening for wave function collapse because we're doing the full edit. We shall see. Um, right. And uh, uh, yes. So uh, just to be clear, um, in terms of the grand scheme of all the things wave function collapse that one could do, and thank you, Simon, for pointing this out, I probably only got even in this 90 minutes, maybe, I don't know, at best 25% of the way there. So, um, but I do have a fully working version of the, um, of the tiled model. And there's more to do with that in terms of recursion and backtracking. Then there's the whole overlapping model, but all to come eventually. All right. Um, Morgan the Mosaic asks, what is the Burbs Nest about? So the Burbs Nest is another 
uh, Twitch channel, maybe somebody who is, I don't know if there are any moderators in the chat, somebody could post a link to it. Um, Sable Rafe, who um, does a, a weekly creative coding challenge and a weekly creative coding newsletter and has guests, has a very reliable live streaming schedule, <laughs> unlike me. Um, uh, you should definitely check out um, his work. And um, tomorrow, the coding challenge, is it called a challenge? I can't remember. But the weekly coding challenge, the WCC for the week, the topic was, <laughs> that's right, <laughs> trains. So I'll be appearing tomorrow. We're going to look through uh, people's contributions and, and, and things. All right. Um, so let's, I think I should just dive right in. Uh, I don't think there's too much else that... I want to talk about if questions or things come up. I'm kind of keeping my eye on the various monitors and screens where I have different chats and things going. But let's just get right to it. The point of today's live stream is to introduce, and I have done this before, but to reintroduce yet again the new Coding Train website and uh, take maybe about an hour to like essentially walk through a tutorial about how to run it yourself, build it yourself, make changes, submit your own work to the Passenger Showcase, maybe help to port a page from the old website that's not on the new website yet. All of these things are open and possible for you to do, and I would love to have as much participation as possible. All right, uh, that is right, Esamismo Bruno. You have got it right. Thank you. Um, all right, so where am I going to now? Ah, okay, so here it is. Without a lot of fanfare, this is the new Coding Train website. If you want to take a peek at it right now, you'll need to go to this URL, codingtrain-preview.netlify.app. The website is builds, the build process deploys directly to Netlify. Um, I don't think there are any issues with me showing my Netlify dashboard. <laughs> so I'm going to show that a bit. Netlify is totally new to me. Um, and um, so I'm excited to sort of like poke through this and look at this a bit. If anybody knows like things that I should make sure not to browse to in the, if, if your experience with Netlify, <laughs> let me know. Um, and I will try to be careful about that, but I'm going to show you how that works. And here we have, of course, the GitHub repository for the website. So let's see what to talk about here. Let me give you some background and backstory. So first we can go to the current website and shout yourself out in the chat if you're somebody who helped design and build this website because it was so many different people or shout somebody else out. I'm trying to remember the first, um, I, I suppose we could probably look at the GitHub repo itself, which is github.com coding train uh, website. This will soon go into archive mode. Um, and if I look at perhaps insights and under contributors, we will see many people have done a lot of work on the website and contributions. And what I'm looking for, I feel like, is um, I have a, like, in my mind, I feel like if I saw the GitHub name, I will know who created the first version of this website, but I don't, I think it'll be more than just a few commits. So I don't think I'm looking in the right place. Um, so we'll have to figure that out, but you can see uh, maybe Grusel house. Maybe I, maybe it's a uh, Nico. Yeah. I think, um, I think Nico is probably the primary uh, contributor and creator of this website. And you can see it had, you know, the most activity it has not, it's sort of, been falling off a bit as I knew sort of a new website was coming and, um, you know, things started to break or go out of date. Um, but so thank you to everyone who's contributed to this website. The goal of the website has always been twofold. One, YouTube for all its wonderful ability to reach a global audience for me and search and discoverability on YouTube in terms of people searching a topic or finding the videos through recommendations. That's been a wonder. YouTube has never been a platform for me that has worked well for the, a person who's coming to the coding train and saying, I'm a total beginner. Where do I start? Or I heard about the nature of code. Where do I find all the nature of code videos? Or, you know, I want to just find out and look around and understand how 
the videos are organized. And, and also, where's the source code for this video? So all of those types of things, the metadata and the organization of the videos, that's always been the goal of the existing website and is the same goal of the new website. The other goal, which I, I maybe should mention first, because in a way it's more primary to me, is to feature and showcase the work of people watching the coding train. That's the reason why I do this, is to then have that feedback loop because nothing pleases me more than to see uh, what um, my videos and code examples have inspired people to make and have some mechanism for, for you to share that back with me. So the new website, those were in the discussions around building it and designing it. Those are the primary two goals. And I should mention uh, Design Systems International. I'm trying to keep my eye on the chat. Um, design Systems International is a wonderful design firm uh, founded by one of the founders of Design Systems International, Rune Matson, is also the organizer of PCD Copenhagen. So it's a nice alignment of things um, where I will be visiting Copenhagen and meeting Rune in person. Um, some of you I know will be there as well and, and officially launching the, the website. You might kind of recognize <laughs> this website as well. Hey, can I? Whoops, no, come back to me. Don't go away so far. Can I not, can I, oh, I move it around. Ooh, this is cool. <laughs> I don't understand how websites work. Um, but you can see that the uh, Processing Foundation website uh, and uh, sort of logo um, is also was also a project of theirs. And you can look at all of their, the wonderful people. Uh, Fernando here has done a ton of work on the website. Martine, um, oh, everybody, everybody here I've, I've had uh, discussions with and seen in a meeting and, and, and I'm thankful for their help. Anyway. Uh, global team of good people. I would uh, co-sign that absolutely. All right. Um, yeah, uh, Simon, so that does exist. Um, so let's let the, pa the passenger showcase, uh, just sort of general passenger showcase page. So I, I believe it does at least. Okay. So this is the design for the website. Um, there are a few key sections that I want to touch upon. So let's just look kind of at what's there right now. Let's start with get started. Let's see what happens when we go to get started. So the get started guide is meant to be a guide for anyone who is totally new. And if you're looking at this and have ideas for things, language, bullet points, things that would help with this guide, I'm open to your contributions there. Um, and you can see that first I'm kind of uh, linking to a video about what is P5 and processing, uh, linking to the workflow uh, uh, videos about working with P5, um, and then this kind of saying like, if you want to start learning to code, here's this beginner uh, track. So a track is like a sequenced playlist of videos. Um, there's the learning processing track. There's the introduction to Git and GitHub track. Um, so this is sort of a getting started guide. This would, might lead you to realize that there are actually um, several guides. So one thing that I need to work on is uh, many of these sort of thumbnail images are essentially uh, placeholder images. Um, there's a kind of hierarchical process where there is a image that's sitting in the GitHub repo that will be used as the preview image unless a particular guide or video has its own preview image. Um, and so uh, here you can see right now we have a getting started guide. Uh, maintaining the website guide, uh, and I have to shout out um, Klein Gareth, who has uh, written both of these guides and done a ton of work on the website. Um, so you can take a look at um, this maintaining the website guide. I'm going to come back to all these pieces in more detail, and then and then the passenger showcase guide, which needs quite a bit of work in terms of some of these images and the explanation. And I hope to make a video uh, to explain how to work the passenger showcase. Okay. Uh, yes, Thing Zero is mentioning a bug. I think I saw you. Maybe you filed a GitHub issue for that. So we'll take a look at that. Um, all right. So that's what I want to show you. The guides. Um, this is kind of a core new feature of the website where um, to understand how to help to submit your stuff to the showcase, maintain the website, and kind of get started with the website. These are all here for you. Okay. Um, every page also like has this new to coding a start here button, which takes you to the getting started guide. Um, all right, so now I'm going to go to videos. So, you know, I wonder if FAQ should actually be more under like community or about potentially, but let's, I'll think about that. Just noticing that now. Um, all right, so under tracks, and um, tracks are the core organizational structure for a collection of videos. So we can see here this code programming with P5.js. 
has a, a special like preview image, has a description of the track. Um, it has uh, tags and topics um, that you can see here. And then I can click and go to the track itself. And the idea of the track is it will have sort of info description, information about it. Again, all these sort of like topics, which we will be able to search videos based on these topics or tags is another way of thinking about them, as well as track stops. And we can see here now, if I click through here, I can get to any particular video along the way uh, through this full beginner track of learning to code with P5JS. Then for any given video, and this is what is kind of um, needs a lot of a love um, from the community. Okay, I, I'm not catching all the chat messages right now where you're reporting bugs to me. <laughs> so I appreciate the discussion, but um, make sure you file these as GitHub issues or I'll kind of check things as I'm, you know, hopefully catch up some of these as I'm going. But the what is missing from some of these pages is, um, you know, we've got the description, a tab here, but there should be a source code tab and uh, any other reference links and things like that. So I have a feeling if I go to one of maybe an earlier, let's see if we go to like shapes and drawing. No, that's not the case, but um, let's go to videos. Let's go to challenges and we can see this is totally like, I'm going to, this is one of the things I want to fix today. So I'm going to do this live with you all because this is like the wrong image and it has this video number instead of the actual video number here, but we can go to a particular challenge. Like if I go to the mandel bulb challenge, We'll see here uh, time codes for the video, which would be really helpful if I have a 90 minute video, as well as this is really uh, what I'm excited about, the passenger showcase, where you can uh, submit your own work, uh, link to it, have a link to your uh, own URL, name of the project. Um, and then here now you're seeing a bit more, um, we've got actual source code examples, uh, the description, any any links that are in that I reference in the video are here with a one sentence description, as well as links to other videos that I reference um, in um, as well. So that's kind of um, brought a bit. I'm glad you were, came here from YouTube somehow. Um, so um, I, um, uh, let's see here, what else? Do I, so that's the core organizational structure. There are tracks. This is what we've got so far, a lot more tracks to bring over. There are challenges. Um, you can see what's here so far. Um, and there, um, there's also an FAQ. So this FAQ, I would love to, this is a great place for feedback and contributions as well. And I think I should just move this over a little bit because I'm kind of standing in front of it. These are sort of a lot of the frequently asked questions that I get. Um, I can pick one like, I watched a video. How do I find the code for it? And we can see here an explanation and what to do if you can't find the code. This also you can link directly. This is a link directly to this particular question. So if I do that, um, you'll see here under the FAQ, there's an anchor name that can go directly to a particular question, um, et cetera. Okay. Um, what else do I want to look at? <laughs> there, is, there is no dark mode. Uh, feel free to file a uh, feature request as an issue for a dark mode. I'm not opposed to that. I don't know what would be involved in terms of the design team that's built and designed the full website, but I, I can understand the desire for that feature for sure. Um, all right, let's see what else. A community discord, this will take you directly to the discord channel. Guides I talked about. Um, GitHub will take you to the coding train GitHub. Um, and the about is a little sort of silly about page about me with uh, some links to Instagram and Twitter and coding train social media and some featured things that go on here, um, as well as credits to folks that worked on the website and other coding train things. Still, all of this is very much in progress. Let's go back to the home page. Um, um, and um, there's the ability to highlight a particular passenger showcase project on the home page. Um, there's an ability for me to place a information about the next live stream, which is all just placeholder stuff right now. Um, all the links for the various ways to support the channel. And then kind of everything you might ever need to find related to the coding train is all down here in the footer. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that is sort of like a quick overview of all of the pieces of the website. Let's take a little 
pause and breather here, have a little sip of this coffee and see if there's any quick questions or things in the chat that anyone wants to ask. All right, I'm gonna scroll through and see. Uh, someone's, um, there was the bug about the Python, the filter by languages filter is broken, I'm being told. Um, dark mode was a request, yeah, okay. Um, let me see if I can, I'm gonna write down some of these things here on my notepad. Uh, dark mode, question mark. Filter by language, and then Python, I'll take a look at that. What was the other one? <laughs> I already can't remember. Or those two things. Okay. And I need to fix, I mean, I want to fix the Monty Hall problem video. I want to uh, remove the placeholder event from the homepage. Um, let's see what else. Uh, oh, Rune is here. <laughs> Hi, Rune. Uh, Rune is in the chat, everybody. Uh, train whistle. Rune gets a train whistle. I don't know if you just joined Rune, but I did give a um, quick overview of the website. I talked a little bit about uh, Design Systems International and uh, PCD Copenhagen. Uh, you should also make a solarized, solarized dark mode. When it's late, my eyes hurt from looking at a white web page. Yep. No, I, I fully, yeah, I'm 100% I'm with you. One of the things we actually talked about is having the scene here. Uh, this is, I don't know when this feature will come but have this scene here change based on the time of day. Um, and so maybe, um, uh, you know, I, I, people might want to sort of customize how the, the theme of the website is, but yeah, Arun would be the, Arun would be the one to answer whether dark mode is a possibility for the website. Um, uh, yeah, all right, so let's say, and let's take a look. So let's take a look at the source code repo now. Um, so what I'm actually going to do, I believe I did this already, but let's open up um, iTerm. And uh, sure, I'll update whatever this is that I need to update. And then um, let's go to, I believe on the desktop, I already cloned, yeah, oh, right. And I was doing a live stream demo. So let me check out main. Um, and let me just say git pull origin main to get whatever I'm sort of missing here. Um, all right, so what's going on here? So if, if you are familiar with GitHub and cloning repos locally to your computer, then what I'm doing is probably an everyday activity for you, or at least something you've tried before. If you are totally new um, um, to this world of maintaining uh, an open source project that builds a website on GitHub, it's, this is totally new to you, I've got a couple suggestions for you. One, just enjoy watching, following along. Anything that I'm gonna demonstrate to you about how to contribute to the website, you can actually do from the web interface. It's just gonna be a little bit more convenient for me to browse through the source, um, looking at local files. The other option that you could do is you can, if you wanna try to follow along a bit, you could go without uh, worrying about git commands, you could download the entire website here with download zip. And this is one of the things, uh, the other time that I showed the website on Twitch that I mentioned, um, which is really important is the entire website is here in this repository. All of the data for the website is here in this repository. It is in JSON files. This is what's known as a statically built website. It uses something called Gatsby, <laughs> which I think has a relationship to React, there is a build script that runs. It is triggered automatically through Netlify. But if you clone this repo, as I'm about to show you, you have everything for the website, all the images, all the data, all the CSS. So I wanted, we wanted the website to still be a statically hosted web page, website, so that it would be um, kind of a friendly place for people to contribute to, to work with the website locally on their computer without having to set up you know, production preview database, this, get a sign up for an AWS account and create the dummy data, or you need some keys. So um, that was the trade-off. Obviously there would be some advantages to potentially having an entire database system <laughs> and a dynamic website in terms of what we're doing at the passenger showcase potentially, uh, especially, but I think for uh, um, um, all things considered, I'm very excited to be able to continue having this statically built website. Okay, um, <laughs> boy, 
I, I don't know how long the dark mode versus light mode discussion will go on in the chat, but I can see that it's still happening. Okay, so if you're, you're, I'm not suggesting you need to follow along with me here, but if you were, the thing that you would want to do once you have the website downloaded, and I'll show you, I have it here. I just have all the folders um, here on my computer. And I'm actually going to, this is fine. So um, one of the things that you'll want to make sure you do uh, is type npm install. So that is going to install all of the node packages and dependencies that are needed to build the website to look at it locally. Now, this is only going to work <laughs> if you happen to already have node installed. So if you don't have node.js installed, you can download and install node.js. Then in a sort of terminal console window, I'll be able to type npm install. So this is going to, I've probably done this already, so it might just say like a lot of stuff is already installed. Let this go. I'm trying to um, take a look at the chat here. Um, okay, uh, great. So that looked like it worked. And I'm not going to worry about some of these vulnerabilities and updates and things. I can worry about that stuff another time. Um, and now uh, let's take a look in uh, Visual Studio Code at all of the code for the website. Okay. So let me close some things out. So the most important thing probably for me to start with looking at, we can see here, look at this. Rune Matson in the chat listed as the author. <laughs> Maybe this might, might, might make sense to change this to... Um, Design Systems International, or or um, or I don't know what makes sense, what what the true author of the website really is, um, um, but um, <clears throat> the and it's no longer private, so I can say this is false. Let's just I, actually I'm not going to make changes right now because I'll sort of think about how I'm doing that in different branches in, in a bit. So this is what the, what I wanted to show you here were these particular commands. So I can run at any point now. I can say npm run test. Test V, clean, serve, build, dev. So for example, something I'm gonna run right now is npm run clean. So what this does is it will clean out a previous build of the website. It's not always necessary, but I have found when working on the website um, that weird things can happen. And if I just run npm clean, those weird things will go away. So that's a nice thing. That's a nice little trick there. Now, looking back at these, um, what I want to run is npm run dev. What that's going to do is it's going to build the website into some temporary directory, run a local web server so I can see the website on my computer hosted locally, and then anytime I make any changes to any files, it will, in the background, notice that and rebuild the website. So when the website is actually deployed to, say, Netlify to the public to see it, that's a one-time process. Build the website, psh, static files online, anybody can see them. I make a change, I might cho choose to rebuild the website, but this is like a developer a mechanism for a developer. It will be very inconvenient for me to like make a change, rebuild, make a change. So this will all happen automatically in the background. So I'm going to say npm, npm run dev. So it's going to take a little bit for it to build the website. It's going to give me a lot of messages and information. Oh, I should run the tests. Actually, running the tests is probably what I should have done first. But um, if there were an issue with the test, it would, the build would probably break. Um, I'm not sure what's going on in the chat. Maybe it's still about light mode and dark mode. OK. Um, now, oh, I want to just know by any chance is uh, Skazer85 in the chat? Or if anybody knows Skazer85, Skazer85, <laughs> I'm going to discuss this pull request um, during the stream and I, um, I'll, I'll, I'll comment on it, but um, I want to come back to that. So I need to, making a note for that too. So Skazer. SKZer85. I'm making a list of things I want to look at today. All right. So let's check check back here. All right. So there was one problem. Um, I don't know what that was. Just a warning. React hook use effect. So I have no idea what this is, but I'm not going to worry about it. Um, I can come back to that later. But the website was clearly built. And if I go now to 
um, let's stay here. I'm going to, I'm going to go away from the, the published version that is uh, deployed through Netlify and just go to localhost 8,000. So this should look identical right now, identical, but I am now looking at the local website. So let's do the first thing that I said I wanted to do. Let's fix some stuff up. Whoops. Oh, sometimes it takes a bit. And you can see here, it's this message down here. Like the website's going to be a little bit slower during the NPM run dev process because it's like preparing pages on the fly as I request them. So that's an important thing to note. Like you won't see this when looking at the actual live website. It's not going to prepare it on the fly. It's going to build the whole thing, but um, that's going to happen from time to time. And uh, let's see, it is taking an unusual amount of time, so, but I'm just going to give it a wait. Um, Uh, Hondo Hondo says, can we all agree on how complicated these static generators are? I think we can all agree that web development is like overly complicated. <laughs> Remember the days where you just have your HTML file? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, the hope is that even though the actual build engine for the website is quite complex and takes some time, uh, there's a bit of a learning curve to working with it, making a change, contributing a small piece to the website, adding to the passenger showcase. Hopefully those will be friendly and accessible. What's going on here? Let's go to, let's open up uh, the console here. Um, let's, what's going on here? Make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to just start over with the lowest 8,000. I don't know what's happening. I'm looking at the chat here. <laughs> Let's, uh, let me just do NPM run test just to demonstrate that. So this is going to run all these test scripts. Oh, there was an error. Passenger showcase. Should this folder be here? Need a second here. Now I don't know what this is. <laughs> I feel like I remember, is this a known issue? I. I don't remember seeing this now. Hold on. I'm all right, already up to date here. Just get everything here. Okay, there's some that's fine. Um I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Try this again. Try building manually once. That would be a good issue eighty six. Oh no, that's a different thing. I remember, I have this vague memory of there being an error in the tests that I just that that I posted and Fernando had replied, oh yes, that has to be fixed, but it's not actually wrong. Um, uh, but let's see, okay. So we are back in business here. There, I don't know what happened before. <laughs> I'm just gonna pretend nothing happened there. Okay, so let's go to this so one thing that I'm just sort of noticing here, by the way, is my instinct was to click on this here. And this is not a link. I have to, to get to it. I have to go to here. I don't know if that's uh, useful information. Anyone wants to file an issue on that. But OK, so let's take a look at this page. So I want to fix up this page, meaning I want to, well, the main thing I want to do is I want to make sure there is a nice custom preview image. Um, you can see that this is like a placeholder preview image. So I want to fix that. And I also want to fix this video number issue. So if I go to the code, 
Um, the where I want to look here, and we can sort of see, is in this folder called content. So there's a folder called content which has all uh, all of the data for all of the content that's on the website. And since I'm working here to fix up the data associated with a particular video, I'm going to go here under videos. Now it's up to me to find the correct video. And um, I know it's a coding challenge, so I'm going to go under challenges. And it is 170, the Monty Hall problem. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to go over here. So this is the JSON file. So everything that you see that is appearing on this page is in this file. So if I wanted to add some new topics, change the languages, um, this is obviously the issue is that it says video number, video number. This should say 170. Um, and if I look at pie in the sky, for example, I guess maybe it should be in quotes because it's JSON. I don't, I don't I never remember how this works, even though it's a number. Um, so let's go back to here and let's put it in quotes. And I think what I would like to do then is um, I'm going to create a branch. I'm going to call it Monty Hall uh, updates. Then I'm going to check out that branch. I know there's a way to do it in one command, but I can never remember. So I'm in this branch right now. And I'm going to um, just do a commit for um, updating the challenge number. Whoops, got. I'm going to do a commit for updating the challenge number. OK, there we go. What else do I want to do? So one of the things you'll notice here is pie in the sky has this image. Whereas the Monty Hall problem does not have a file in the directory called index.jpg. So I want to add one. Now, the, normally I would be working on this. I'd have access to this shared drive of Photoshop files where I have all the thumbnail files in. Let's just do a sort of silly thing right now, which is to uh, grab download thumbnail. I'm going to do, um, I probably could use my YouTube DLP. Um, Let's see, can I YouTube, um, let's look at this. Uh, can I use this to get a thumbnail? Thumbnail options, uh, right thumbnail. Okay, so if I do this, um, this is silly, I'm sure there's a million tools online that I could use. Do I have, yep. So I'm using this command line tool called YouTube DLP. Um, and uh, all I need is the video URL. And write thumbnail, I think, is the argument. There's probably some argument for don't download the video. Let's see what that is. Uh, skip video. Don't no video. Ignore no. Do not download the video. No, I don't want to do simulate. I just want to skip the video. Whatever. I'll let it. <laughs> this is very silly what I did. Let's see if we can get this to work. Download the web page. It's downloading the video, but um, that's fine. <laughs> I'm doing this from just the root directory of the Coding Train website, which is probably a bad idea for a variety of reasons. We can see it here. This is the thumbnail. Web P, oh, Web M. That's fine, let's just finish. Skip download, thank you, Alka. Um, so let's do, um, all right, so let's delete this. Let's try getting a better command. So uh, where was the thumbnail? I want, uh, Write all thumbnails. Okay, so let's do YouTube DLP, write all thumbnails, and then skip download. Should do the trick. Okay, oh my God, how many thumbnail formats are there? That is insane. Look at that craziness. 
Uh, I just want the probably the the biggest one, which would be this. Great. So let's get rid of this. All of these. This now needs to go in. Can I just drag it in here to here? So this should go, and let's call this uh, index.jpg. And let's get rid of all these other extra ones. <laughs> uh, and I don't need the .jpg twice. Let's bring this into here. Great, I can delete it from there. Now, if we go back to the web page, so first of all, we see that the number is there now. And whoops, if I go back to the challenges, there we go. So um, these images are a slightly different aspect ratio, and it's my intention to sometimes do a, like a little bit of a custom design, but I think that's fine. It works. This is much, you can see it like sort of looks different in different places, but that's great. Okay, so that's fixed. Let's see if there's anything else that I want to change. Um, so let me go over to here and. Um, Let's add that image, add thumbnail image, okay. Now, let's look at this page. If we go to the Monty Hall problem, these timestamps look fine. Topics wise, I'm fine with these. Um, I seem to remember on the design, this is missing like little emojis or icons that go here. I can't remember if that's something I'm supposed to enter. Uh, hmm, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. All right, so let's take a look. Let's take a look at what these are, just curious. Three-door demonstration of the Monty Hall problem with gameplay statistics. That goes to here. Monty Hall variable speed and doors. Okay, right, this is like a fancier one. Okay, the GitHub repo. So that, this is gonna, uh, let's look at this. So this is going to take me to where? Here, that's great. And then this button, I'm just curious, we'll download it, and it works. And then demo. This takes to here. Great. So that this seems right. These are the core examples. The description is fine with me. Um, references. Game show problem document. These seem fine. There might be something I missed. And these are other videos that I reference. All right. So this this page otherwise looks really good. Now there are no contributions submitted yet. Is anybody who's watching happen to make something based on this video? If so, I could talk you through submitting it. But um, all right. So this is good. I'm going to now go to here and say git push origin Monty Hall updates. Oh, why is my authentication failed? Oh, I forgot I didn't clone it correctly. This happened to me last time. <laughs> All right, so my options are reclone the whole thing correctly, or there's probably some way I can get a token and put it temporarily. I forget how this works. Does anybody know? Ugh. All right, so let's do this. It's okay, everything's gonna be fine. So let's go to, uh, uh, I'm going to just deal with this the best way that I can. Um, SSH is what it should be. And I'm going to, whoops, let's just call this backup. And now... Let's clone this. All right. So uh, if you're confused about what I'm, what's happening right now is I have private keys saved and configured on this computer to authenticate me into my GitHub repos. 
but when I had downloaded it before, I downloaded it in a way that wasn't making use of those keys by using HTTPS, and then there's a different way I have to authenticate. Um, so I'm re recloning the repo with SSH. Um, and so now what I should be able to do, and this is really silly what I'm doing, but I'm gonna go into content, videos, Monty Hall problem, I'm just gonna copy that. And I'm gonna go into here, content, videos, challenges i'm going to paste it in here i'm going to replace uh, then i'm going to go into here so there we go modified index.json uh, a new um a new image so now i can let's let's run uh npm install again close that Right. So if you, if I'm not using SSH, I can create a personal access token through the website and then enter that. But I didn't feel like doing that. Uh, so the, so I'm going this way. Three o'clock. All right. This will this will be ready in a moment. Switching remote URLs from HTTPS. Oh, thank you, Alka. So there's a way for me to do that. Too late. <laughs> I've already done this. Let's do npm run test. I think we're going to get that one uh, weird error that I can't remember why that error is there. I'll have to investigate that later. I swear I filed an issue about it. Anyway, um, maybe I'll file a new. Well, that's interesting. American 2050 is saying that the, maybe the images should be named something else for SEO purposes. Will that... The question is, will that matter after post build process? Um, I don't know, but that's a great question. You could certainly file that as a question as an issue. We could come back to it later, or maybe somebody from DSI would have an opinion on that. Um, it might be that you can name the file anything and it just looks for an image file in that directory. <laughs> but regardless, um, I'm going to say now, git branch uh, Monty Hall fix. Git checkout. Oh, and I forgot to do the dash B, which would have checked it out automatically. So now I'm just um, uh, fix number and add thumb. So now I'm pushing this. And let me raise this up so that it's not so at the bottom of my screen. Okay, so now that I pushed it to the repo, I can open a pull request. So this is update Monty Hall problem challenge. And the things that I did are our fix number, to, uh, fix number 170, add a thumbnail image. Okay, so let's create this pull request. And I'm gonna, um, and it should, in a moment, it's going to run a set of tests and build a preview of the page. So this is all now stuff that's been configured and happening through Netlify. So I'll come back to that. I'm gonna let it run for a little bit. So I have fixed up the Monty Hall challenge. Okay. Um, let's, the next thing I wanna do on my list here is let's, let me just look at the homepage for a moment. So I am going to check out the main branch again. Um, let's run npm run dev so I can look at it locally. And let's look at the main homepage now. So I think that's going to be under pages, under homepage index.json. So this is all of the language and information that is on the homepage. So little text edits or what a link goes to can be changed here. Um, and I'm actually going to, I kind of want a uh, word wrap here. So I want to rewrite this. Watch Daniel take on some viewer submitted coding challenges in P5. Um, I mean, I guess that's an accurate description. Okay, I'll leave that for now. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm looking for events. 
So I think what I'm going to do is remove this upcoming event. So when I know I'm having an actual stream, I can schedule it by adding it to the web page here. I'm going to delete it. Let's see what happens. Now on the home page. Yeah, okay. So the events just says, keep up eye out for events in the future. So I think we need to fix that text. Uh, where is that? Uh, events. Keep your eye out. Um, coming events. Oh, you know what I could do? Is I could put like PCD Copenhagen here. That could be interesting. Let's try that. Um, next coding train event. Let's try this. Let's see what happens if I, now I already forgot what was there. <laughs> so one of the things Without having an event there, I need to know what is the metadata associated with it. What's the chance that that is in? Probably not, but let's take a look at the maintain the website guide. Let's see, event. So I don't see, uh, and, and somehow some formatting stuff got lost here. Um, so this, this could be fixed up. I could work on fixing this up. Um, but I don't see a, um, a uh, information from this. So what I'm going to do here, <laughs> I'm going to, just for the future, um, let's do this. I'm going to go to the main branch and go to um, content, pages, uh, homepage, index.json. And let's look at uh, upcoming. Okay. So I'm going to file an issue. Add documentation for properties of a coding train event. This should probably go in the guide. Uh, so I'm just gonna, oh, this is bothering me. <laughs> Why? Why? That's fine. Uh, let's submit this. Okay, so this at least I can refer to here. So let's go now. Let's just see what happens if I were to say um, processing community, uh, let's just say, let's call it PCD Copenhagen. Let's go to PCD Copenhagen. Uh, oh, look, we have the schedule here. Awesome. Oh, Stig is doing the beginner workshop. Fantastic. Uh, uh, okay. Let's take this sentence here and put it in here. Then we're going to say it is June 14th. It is at... I don't... What is What time zone is... Um, but I'm going to say 16.00, I should call host. Um, I don't know who the host is. <laughs> uh, in real life. And then the URL is Central European Summertime, GMT plus two. Thank you. Let's do that. So now let's take a look and see what this looks like on the home page. Did I break something? I may have. Okay. 
Look at this. PCD Copenhagen. Now, I wonder, part of me thinks that maybe there should be like a little image or something here, but I'm not going to worry about the design stuff too much. Uh, great. So you can see uh, here is all the information about the next event. And if I go here, it takes me to there. This should probably be like open a new tab, but I don't know. I don't know what people, how people feel about that. So now let's do git. I'm going to, I think it's dash B. We'll check out the branch. Um, Whoops. PCD event. No? <laughs> I can never remember. How come I don't know how to do these things? Git branch <laughs> PCD event. Adding PCD Copenhagen event. So now we're going to have another pull request happening. Let's go here. And just to, I think it's often very useful when um, submitting a pull request to add a screenshot. Um, updates the home page to include there we go let's create this pull request amazing now i'm going to go back and let's take a look at this one so we can see now all the checks have passed so i feel very confident i could just merge this but one of the wonderful things about having this be on netlify is i can actually look at a pre it, this is so ridiculous. I should never have called the preview of the Coding Train website Coding Train dash preview because this is a preview of the preview. Eventually, this won't look like this. But um, so I'll have to rename. Um, but uh, if I go here, um, I should be able to now go under videos, challenges, and we can see that already um, this has been fixed. So this is all good to go. I'm going to merge this pull request. That is taken care of. Let's take a look at this. This one is still running. I'm going to wait for all these checks to finish before I merge that one. OK, so I have now done the Monty Hall and the placeholder event. Now, let's take a look at this issue. <laughs> let's take a look at this issue related to the Python language the language tags. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to main. Let me pull that pull request which was merged. And let me now go to, um, let's go to tracks. So if I click here, Python. So that worked, but there are no tracks that include Python, which is fine. Um, let's go to challenges. And if I pick Python here, so this is working. What was wrong? Oh, well, one thing is that there is a lowercase Python and an uppercase Python. That's interesting. So I wonder if it would make sense for the tags not to be case sensitive. Um, oh, way AI subscribe. Thank you. Choo choo. Um, um, so I'm thinking about this. So let me open an issue. Let's find this issue. Um, when I go to tracks, there's filter by language. There's Python and Python. Python exists and Python doesn't. Oh, interesting. Okay. So let me fix this. So. I'm going to ask, um, I am going to fix this um, and change the topics to all be lowercase Python. But do you think the topics and languages should maybe not be case sensitive? Um, 
So let me do this. So this is issue 146. Uh, so I'm going to do a branch, topics, cleanup, Python. Topics, cleanup, Python. Now, this is going to be a little tricky. So what I need to do, I believe, is I'm going to try to do like a global search. And I'm going to search for, um, and I'm going to use regular expressions. So I'm looking for lowercase p or capital P Python. Let's see. No results. Maybe that is not the way to do it. Let's just look for, oh, no, this is silly because this makes it case instant. What are these uh, options? Ah, uh, yes. All right, let's do this. So there's eight results in three files. So this is fine. Ah, okay, so let's just change this one to lowercase python. Uh, lowercase python. So that's fine. So there was actually just one because the Python tag is so infrequently used. Um, are you using topics as tags because as a topic, using capitalization looks better? Yeah, I don't have an answer for this question. They're called topics, but they're kind of more like tags. I kind of like them lowercase though. Maybe they should be renamed to tags. I don't know. That's another issue that could be opened and cleaned up. But I'm just going to, at the moment, make them lo make it lowercase. And then I also want to deal with another. So this is issue 146. Um, so JavaScript with capital J, capital S. <sighs> I'm not going to fix that right now. I'll come back to that. That's a really nice, important, kind of important detail. But let's, oh, let's look here. Oh yeah, right. This is really um, so. Uh, let me fix. So let me actually fix this and then add. I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> this is 146. Uh, lowercase Python for 146. Um, let's just see if this shows up. Okay. So, um, let's go to here. Um, bringing, and let me make this a little bigger so you can see it, bringing discussion from 146 should topics all be capitalized or all lowercase is tag a more clear term than topic. Um, okay, so now one thing I want to do is I have basics and four beginners. So let's look for let's look for anywhere that has four beginners. A lot, a lot of places have four beginners. Um, so the question is, and then I have some that are called basics. I think I would like to change this to beginner friendly. It's kind of, I mean, should I really have things be two words? Um, yes, lowercase is one word. Did I type it? Let me, let me see how this feels. Also, this is not really a for beginners. <laughs> so... I don't know why this one is labeled for beginners because the L system is not really for beginners. Uh, so we're gonna, this topic should be fractals, algorithmic botany. 
Um, so I'm fixing that one. And then this also is not really a for beginners. Uh, math and curves. Yeah, I don't want to get too too caught up in levels and having, um, but I, it is an interesting suggestion. Simon's suggesting like thinking about levels, but um, I, oh, I can't actually change it here, can I? Didn't actually change it, did it? Yeah, it's so weird. I don't understand what I'm doing. Uh, okay, recursion, this is for beginners. Let's call it beginner, ah! Beginner, how do you spell beginner? I'm like losing my mind. Beginner friendly. How does that sound to people? Kind of like that. Uh, all right, oh, I don't know that I'm gonna have the time and energy to do this right now. Uh, beginner friendly, yeah, like chapter one of Nature of Code is beginner friendly, I think. Um, Uh, all right, so I'm, this is going to be in progress. <laughs> I don't think I, I want to, during the live stream, go through and do all of the topics here. Um, starting to update topics. Oh, that should have, um, how do I revise my commit message? You know, it's fine. I don't need to. Okay. Um, now, let's go back to the repo. So this is going to be um, um, C1... C128, starting the work for 128. So I'm gonna say uh, work in progress. And can I make this a draft pull request? Yes, draft pull request, okay. So if anybody wants to pick this up where I left off, uh, this, this could use a lot of work, but I don't think I wanna do that during um, during the amend, get commit amend. Thank you. Beginner. I think probably just beginner makes sense. It will be more succinct. Um, okay. So, great. So, that is something I have now looked at. All right. Um, what else do I want to go through? Let's look through the pull requests here. This one should be fine. This one looks like it's all set. I'm, I'm not gonna, well, let's check the deploy preview. I'm gonna check the deploy preview. Uh, looks good, PCD Copenhagen is there. And so let's merge this one. And then I should be able to get back to the main branch. And all's well again. All right, so what else do I wanna do? Let's go through everything that's there. So I'm gonna go through everything that's there. I'm gonna come back to uh, SKZER 85's pull request. And then um, I am going to talk about the passenger showcase. Let me just... And then that will be the end for today. Um, and I'll, if people have um, particular uh, elements of the site you want to contribute to, we can um, we can have a little like bit of time at the end where you can say what you might want to work on in the chat, and I can kind of give you some feedback or point you in the right direction. Okay, so we know what this is. I started working on topics cleanup. This I'm going to come back to. What is this? Um, okay, so this is this we need a little bit more context for, so I can come back to that. Let's go to all of the issues. 
Um, all right, so let me just close out some things here. Uh, and let's take a look at all these issues. I'm going to do this in a sort of silly way. See where we are with these. Actually, I don't think there's really anything for me to go over here, but I'm going to go through them. Uh, all right. So this is a um, very long list of all the things working on for the site. Um, if anyone wants to sort of like follow the development of the site, this is probably a great summary of everything that's kind of happened, but uh, not something that I'm necessarily going to go through right now. Um, but these are two things that I that are for me to keep working on. Um, okay. Tests. All right. Um, I'm going to just make a note here. I'm going to run the tests. Let's add a little note here to this issue. And let's take a screenshot of this. Um, near that one of the tests is failing. I thought I filed an issue about this before, but I can't find it. Maybe we discussed on Slack. Okay, we have a Slack channel for developing the website, so it could have been there. So I'm going to add this here. So let me add this here, just so that is documented. We'll come back to that later. Okay, so this issue is good. Revisit adding images to reference related content. Ah, yes. So this, this will come back, but I think this is what I was referring to when I'm on here. If I go to... Um, challenge and I think we were talking about like little thumbnail images or something could go here related to um, or, or little icons I can't remember where we left this but I'm gonna I'm just gonna leave that uh, okay um, that's fine let's see oh what so I'm not gonna worry about that right now archive pay okay this is something else for later Passenger showcase submission process. Okay. So I'm going to come back to the passenger showcase. Um, so I will ignore this for right now. Track thumbnails. So this, we definitely need to do more of these track thumbnails. Um, Jason has been working on them. I'm going to leave this. Not Review front end design and lighthouse report. So these are some things that are happening in terms of the design. I don't need to look at that right now. The acknowledgments are a thing that I'm going to finish. Um, this is a discussion about some UI fixes that I think have already been mostly addressed. Um, so I'm gonna leave this open. Um, this I'm gonna close once I merge that other pull request, which fixes the topics. And then um, this I talked about. So actually, so I went through all the issues and pull requests. There's nothing here for me to specifically address. <laughs> okay, I didn't open 128. Yeah, but this I've already talked about, this I'm working on. Okay, so let's now go to, um, S. Kayser didn't show up. <laughs> Did they by any chance? <laughs> let's go to this pull request. This is, uh, Okay, so one of the challenges with the website that I've faced is whether or not to just blanket bring over in some automated way all of the content from the old website or to manually bring content over piece by piece, updating and fixing it along the way. And my preference, I think, where I landed at least previous to seeing this pull request was I want to use this as an opportunity to update, fix things, improve things, and just bring content over slowly, piece by piece. It is tempting, however, to realize that what this has done is it's a web scraper to grab all of the challenge data from the old website. Um, but what happens is they're coming over, they don't have the images, they're missing pieces. So I think what I would, uh, what I reply to here, oh, 
And there's another comment. Um, yeah, that's also interesting. Uh, I have to, I have to, I have to, I have to reply to this. So what I wrote was, um, okay. So I, um, I'm, I'm reading my comments over. Scraper daily. No, no, um, no. The news. So, so out with the old. The old website is never to be touched again. If I make a new video, there's no page going on the old website. So there's no, definitely no reason to run a scraper every. So I'm going to reply S Kaiser 85. <laughs> to your uh, to your issue here, then what I'll do is when I post the archive of this Twitch stream, I will link to it uh, from here. So let's let let me just reply to it rather than type this out. Okay, so definitely don't want to do that. This can be a one time thing to grab everything from the old website now. Okay, update this branch to the latest commit from the main branch and remove the folders that had already had data. Beautiful, thank you. Mwah. Wonderful. Um, and it may not even matter now. Yes, I think it won't matter now because of the, the way I, the idea that I have to move forward with this, since they may go to an entirely different repo. Um, okay. Also, I could do the same thing for the coding in the Cabana videos. I think the coding in the Cabana videos. So that's a separate issue. Let's come back to that. This is what I would like to see happen. I think what I would love to see happen is all of these JSON files that were automatically created could go into, and I'll, I'll make a repo for it. Let's make a repo for it right now. Or actually, um, let's look, let's look at uh, here. So let's look at the code for that is here. Let's see where this is. Okay, so this is the scraper. So I think what would make sense would be to actually run the scraper and bring all of the JSON files into this repo. That way, one at a time, if anybody wants to, and I'm going to do this now, like, let's do this, I'm going to do this process now. Like, let's say, and this is going to take a, a minute to load here because it's a million files. Let's say I wanted to bring in one of the coding challenges that's not on the new website. So let's say I want to do Starfield. So I'm going to go here to this file. I'm going to look at, no, no, no. I just want this file. Boy, uh, GitHub just cannot handle this. I guess I could just go into this branch. I want to look at this file. How do I get to that file? Just this file. Open up. Here it is. Well, won't let me, it just like the browser is dead. It cannot handle, yeah. I want to wait. Okay. Right, come back to me. Come back to me. Oh my God, this is going to make me crazy. All right, let me just. Um, all right. Let's exit the page. I don't have the patience. Let me go to that branch. Can I go to that branch? We'll pull requests. Can I browse the code from this branch? How do I do that? without clicking on this. Can I go here? Yes, okay. So now I can go into content, videos, challenges. Okay, Starfield uh, index. So what I'm saying, my, my idea here is that I am the uh, person on the internet who, who decided they wanted to add the Starfield coding challenge to the new website. This is great that I have this here, like I can start fresh. So what I'm gonna do is do this. Here I am, I'm gonna say git branch starfield challenge. I'm gonna check out that branch. Then 
I am going to go here and under videos challenges, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it one starfield. Then in here, I'm going to create a new file, index.json, and I'm going to paste it in. So now I have a starting point from which to work. But this video, I believe I did the star field in processing. I don't know what topics are in it. Let's go look at the what topics would make sense for this. Starfield coding challenge. I mean, I can also go to um, just as a reference here. Um, and I can go to here so I can sort of think about it. Like if I like if I just want to like quickly look at the video, scan it, definitely do it again in processing. Objects and arrays, perspective, math, like what's going on here? I don't know what. Let's call it a uh, space. Let's have a topic called space. Related challenges. I would love to put the timestamps in. The code examples I've got, that's great. But, oh, this is another huge thing. I need to create an entire new repo for the coding challenge stuff. So I'll worry about that later. Um, like I really don't want these links to be going to the old website. Um, um, references, title, now, um, Title is um, Inspiration Challenge Based on Code from the CS Department of Bryn Mawr College. So there we go. So now that I've added this, Ah, and then I also want to, let's grab the thumbnail, or let's make a thumbnail. So now I want to also make a thumbnail. Um, let's do, let's make it like this aspect ratio. Copy the image. And then save it, call this like index.jpg. Let's just call it starfield.jpg. We're gonna put it on the desktop, use PNG, that's fine. Uh, and then close this. Now, where am I? I also need to then bring in this file and let's have a look-see at the local website. And if I go to videos, challenges, you should see now next page. Look at this. I now have the Starfield coding challenge. And if I click on it, I'm taking to this page. Now I really want to add timestamps, um, but we can see here, and I need to add the, the showcase contri contributions, but this is great. So I, I much prefer to do this as a bit of a manual process. Um, and uh, so yeah, so this is good. And so now, porting Starfield Challenge. And I could bring the contributions in. It's tempting, but, um, but I'm not going to do that right now. <laughs> Uh, um, so now, if 
sporting star field, bringing, um, adding star field coding challenge to site. Um, I'm going to say uh, work in progress. Um, I like to bring the contributions over before merging. Okay. Um, so now, so the process, so this is where it's going to, so, so this is the idea. Like ultimately, um, So PhD is saying maybe you could use YouTube API and get the chapters from the timestamps automatically. So yes, I do plan on having the timestamps that um, um, go back and forth to have having that be an automated process. But I did not. I don't think that coding challenge on YouTube has timestamps. So there might be some automated ones that that YouTube does, but I would prefer to curate them. So. Um, so that's the thing. Uh, if I were uh, not live streaming right now and I wanted to finish this, I should also, I'll, um, let me add this, also needs, let me just say, uh, to do. Add contributions with thumbnail images. Add timestamps. Uh, add any other reference links move source to github se uh, separate github repo uh, okay so this is tbd okay So you can see it's a lot of work. <laughs> I'm, I'm running out of steam here. Um, and I want to talk about the passenger showcase. <laughs> That'll be the last thing. But ultimately, in a kind of dream scenario, and maybe I'll do this right here, like what if I were to create a wiki page? I'm trying to think of like, uh, maybe I just need to do this on a future live stream that's not today. But my idea is, you know, there's 73 people watching right now. If I were to stream this on YouTube, I could probably get a slightly larger audience. Maybe if I scheduled it in advance or promoted it, maybe I could. But my idea was what if I did kind of a day where I streamed and like everybody sort of like signed up to do one coding challenge. So you, everybody would create a separate pull request for a previously made coding challenge using maybe a starting point of the data that was scraped, adding the timestamps, fixing up like the source code, um, adding the contributions, making little thumbnails for, for it. And like everybody would do that. You know, if there's a hundred some coding challenges, I just need, you know, hundred some people, everybody take one. But I don't feel like I have the stamina right now to do that today. So I was just trying to introduce the ideas and anybody watching wants to volunteer to like port one coding challenge to see how that process is. I, it would be uh, welcome and encouraged. Um, but what I want to look at now is the passenger showcase. Um, and that's really what I want to encourage people to submit their projects to. Because there's going to be a lot of things that we can do with the passenger showcase with the new site and build system. Um, Simon had mentioned, like, for example, the, all of these ideas of like, there's no reason why I couldn't essentially like build an API out of it. Um, since everything's kind of in J JSON files with standardized naming conventions. So let's look at this. So let's continue by uh, working on the um, passenger showcase for the Starfield coding challenge. All right. Let me do this for a second. Uh, can I... Let's go back to that branch. What was it called again? Oh, right, I have to go from the pull request. It's 
from here. Oops. Hmm. So what I think I want this. Scraped data. Hmm. Oops. These are the. Yeah, just that is a, so. So great comment. So multi-part coding challenges. I don't know what to do about that yet. I think at at present, I'm not really going to be doing multi-part coding challenges anymore. <laughs> so they'll either be distinctly separate videos that would each need their own, and and they're related, but they each need their own page, or there's just going to be one long video like wave function collapse. So I think unfortunately we're probably just gonna. I don't know the answer to that. File an issue to discuss, but I think probably for the older ones, I'm just going to leave them as separate. It'll be a little bit awkward, but there'll just be separate pages for each of them. I don't know what to do about that, that honestly. <laughs> um, <coughs> right, system to claim. Um, so right now there is no system. What I would suggest is for the current system should be open an issue saying, hey, I want to bring this coding challenge into the new website. So that's claiming it. So nobody else, people will see like that one's already been claimed. I could create a wiki page that lists all of them if somebody wants to help with that. And then you could sign up on the wiki page or something. That could also work. Um, but yes, that's a great point to strike. Okay, now, <laughs> I think what I'm going to do absurdly is I'm going to clone um, I'm going to clone this a fork then I am going to go into it and I'm going to check out um what is the branch? Scraped data, I think. Yeah. Okay. So now I should be able to go into this scraped data under videos, challenges, number one, showcase. So, wow, there were a lot of submissions. This is nuts. So let's just see how this goes. I'm going to do this. So thank you for scraping and bringing these all in. So I'm going to now take this folder and in this branch, I am going to add it in. Um, let's go to uh, videos, challenges, Starfields. I, I, I wanna do these one at a time to be sort of careful about it. So the showcase is there. So now I should be able to go to here and back to, <laughs> so it's, it's, there we go. It's building the site. I'm gonna go to this one, building the page. And now, now where, why is the showcase not showing up? need this anymore simplify things right I'm gonna I'm gonna rebuild the site oh maybe there's a test I'm also gonna run the test let's see if I miss something with the tests no just that weird oh no another ah a DS store file got in there by accident. Blech. Okay, where is that? 
Where did it end up in there? Frustrating here. Okay. Let's look at the hidden files. So am I showing hidden files or not? Now I'm showing hidden files. It's not here. Oh no, some other file. I'm so confused. So this is that other weird issue that's not an issue. Oh, oh, starfield.png. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. It has to, the test, it wants it to be named index.png. Okay, that's fine. Fine. So it does need to be named index.png. Uh, showcase, okay. That's fine. So that should get rid of that test error. It's allowing DS store because <laughs> that's a file that makes its way in there, the tests. Okay, so we're back to just one failed, which is fine. Okay, now. Why is the passenger showcase not showing up? So let's look at like, let's look at one where it is showing up. Mandelbulb, showcase. Hmm. Are there just too many? Let me just, let me take out all but one. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure DS Store is already added to Git Ignore because that's my my life's obsession is getting rid of DS Store. Yeah, it's there. But why? Why is the showcase not showing up? So let's look at this file. Maybe. here for a second. So let's take a look at the guide. Passenger showcase guide. The title. Asteroid field. Then this should be, be able to come out. Can contribute true, showcase contribution one. Why, why, why? So now I'm stuck, I don't know why. Hmm. Whoops. I don't know what is going on.
Oh, NPM run clean. Ah, I mentioned that at the beginning. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, interesting. Okay. Thank you. I forgot about that. So I said this at the beginning. Anytime something weird happens, running NPM run clean is usually the solution. Thank you for that reminder. Okay, building development bundle. Okay, there we go, look at that. There it is. All right, so now I should be able to, so I it was silly that I took out all the other ones, but that's okay, I'm gonna get them back uh, here. Uh, content, videos, challenges, 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 Starfield. So let's try getting the rest of these. Let's be a little bit, let's bring these in here. What's the chance that they will all show up? Probably gonna need to run NPM run. Let's just do NPM run clean again. I wonder if there is something that could be done to fix that. If that's an issue, I should file. Okay. Almost four o'clock here. Hmm. Ah, would be good. To, yeah. So, um, Joseph, before I leave, it's my intention to show the process uh, of just of do, of adding one just through the website. Yes. Um, so remind me about that, but let me let me see if I can get through this. So let's refresh this page. Okay, so we see they're all there now. Now, they're all just showing the default thumbnail. That is the thumbnail of the challenge itself. The other reason why I don't want to just do this is some of these links might no longer work. So if they don't work, I kind of don't want to include them. Um, but obviously, anybody would be welcome to revive their link and resubmit it. But if I go to here, that's great. So now, what I'm curious about is, what if I were to do? If I were to do this, um, so now I have this special image, and I'm going to call it contribution one dot png. So now, where did I save that? I have no idea where I just saved that. Where did I just save that? Recents? Where is it? Oh, it's on the desktop. Perfect. That's where I would have wanted to put it. So if I put this here, now I don't know whether I'll have to run npm run clean again, but the idea is, oh no, I'd already fixed it, that now this is a custom image for this particular one. So I'm gonna do more of these. Uh, Rainbow Starfield. Oh. That's not going anywhere. Ah, okay. So see what I mean? Like, this is not right. So I need to go to contribution two. And, uh, let's look at contribution one. So this is, whoops, see this is what I don't love. This should be the source. That's the author in there and then uh, oh it's an Xcode project. So the source is actually the project. Okay. URL. So that's fine. So this I can't, I'm not going to attempt to make a screenshot of. Uh, but why, why did it? Oh, I'm looking at, this is not necessarily two. Sorry, I'm looking at Rainbow Starfield. 
which is not necessarily this one. There we go. Ah, okay, right? See, the URL is missing. Okay, so that fixes it. Now, if I go here, does it still exist? It does. I can get this image. and save it as, this one is contribution 10. Con uh, oh, once this PNG. So now, if I take this and put it here, there we go. And you can see now, what, did it squish that image or is it just cropped? Who knows? But this is the idea. So I could manually start to do these one at a time. The idea is that going forward, you would submit your own image. But because we didn't have images on the previous website and I want to bring the other ones back, um, I could do these slowly one at a time. Um, oh, I love this. Whoa, look at that, so cool. Copy image. And now I'll just do one more. Yeah, it's ordering without leading zeros, which is fine. It, I think the idea is it should just be in like a random order each time it builds the site, but whoops. Um, contribution, I don't know which one this is. So I'm learning about how this process now, how awkward it can be, but how satisfying it is to see them there. So this one is backwards Starfield, right? Which one was that? So 10, probably, probably 11 is that one. Yeah. Um, okay, source URL. So if the, if the source is not different than the URL, oh, oh it is. Um, great, perfect. So this is contribution 11. And there we go. So I probably should have screenshotted that more close up. <laughs> like that's a terrible thumbnail. <laughs> so is this one. But I think, you know, ultimately it's the, um, the, the people who are submitting these projects. So I would encourage anybody who's watching this, if you want to just, if you've already submitted something to the old website, don't count on it just automatically making its way. Feel free to resubmit it to the new one. But or if you have the energy and desire to help out, you could do what I'm doing essentially for a particular challenge. Um, and so I'm going to stop right now and I'm going to go like. Uh, starting to bring a showcase over. Okay, there we go. So I'm just gonna go look at this. Do I have a pull request open? Yeah. Does it do a deploy preview? It doesn't if it's um, a draft, which is fine. Um, did I, yeah. Okay, so anybody who would like to help, <laughs> Um, and I also, the, um, you know, I don't know what the best, I'm, I'm, I'm just figuring this out. So I don't know what the best process is. Um, so let me go back to Joseph's question. I don't know, Joseph, if you're still there. So this now ends my discussion of this particular pull request. And so um, then that just uh, noting that I went through and discussed this on the, it's happening now as I type this on Twitch, I will link to the time code for the discussion. Please remind me when
when it's up when the archive is posted. Okay, I'm putting that here. All right. So let's say you are now what I want to move to, and this is the last thing I'm going to cover today, uh, other than any questions or you know if we want to try to put together a Google Doc or a wiki page for all the challenges. I'm open to that. Um, so let's say I am now a new. Uh, I'm a viewer of the coding train, and I recently watched um, the Prime Spiral coding challenge. And I would like to be the first person to submit to the passenger showcase. There's no passenger showcase there. So how do I do this? The way this would be done, so obviously, through all the things I've already been demonstrating through command line and Git and all of that, I can do that. But if I were just a new viewer, the, what I would do is, and in theory, um, this guide, it, this guide needs some edits and some new screenshots, but I should be able to follow this guide. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, find, uh, the first thing I need to do is find the video folder for the video that I'm submitting a project to. So here on the website, I'm going to go to content, videos, challenges, and the one I said, what did I say it was? I said um, Prime Spiral. So here I am. Now I need to make a new branch. So here what I'm going to do is create the name of my branch. So I, I would need to be logged into GitHub, but I don't, any account, anybody can do this. I'm going to say Dan Showcase Demo uh, and for 167. So I'm going to create this branch. So now I'm in a new branch. And I can see that from here. Now what I need to do is add a file. I need to add my contribution file. Question is if I want to add, and and this is a little tricky because there's no showcase folder here yet. If there already were submissions to the showcase, I would see a folder here, and I would go into that folder and add a file. But because it doesn't exist, I can do create new file. I can also upload the file, but and I'm going to do showcase. I got to do the name of that folder showcase, and then I'm going to call it contribution one .json. So the way this works now is these, um, the, and it should be, I thought we were calling these showcase, but it's fine. <laughs> I kind of want to rename them the showcase, but it's fine. We can call it contribution one. Contribution one, I am, if there was a previous one there, I'm going to name it two or three. I'm just going to pick a number that's not already there. Then here, this is the data that needs to go there. So I'm going to put this data here. So this is Dan's demo prime spiral. My name is Daniel Schiffman. My website, I could put like my Twitter in there. I could put my personal website. Let's just do my, let's do this just to mix things up for a bit. Then the actual project itself, Uh, let's go to editor. I'm going to log in as the coding train. Let me find something that I did <laughs> related to the prime spiral. Mm, no, I'll make maybe I'll make something now. Oh, yeah, this is actually an extra example that I made. So prime versus random. Okay, great. So uh, I want to do share. Let me grab uh, this. URL for the project URL. Oh, no, no, where am I? Sorry, I'm not here. I'm here. No, I'm here. <laughs> so this is the project URL. And my source code URL will just be the actual editor link. So that would go here. So I'm going to put that here. And I'm going to commit this new file. to that branch, then I want to add a screenshot. So I'm going to 
take a screen, you know, let me just take my own screenshot. So I took a screenshot. I'm going to find it on the desktop. Here it is. I'm going to call this, whoops, contribution one.png. And then back to here. All I need to do is drag it in. And I now have submitted, oops, I don't know why it took me away from there, but that's fine. I can see that I, in this branch, I've added a JSON file and the PNG file. I can now essentially, it's actually, it's like giving me a little hint here of what I want to do. But now that I have that new branch, I could do compare and pull request. And this uh, demonstration of showcase submission. showing how to add a showcase submission. And I'm going to actually make this a pull request. And what I'm going to do now is wait for this to run its tests and run the preview. And I should be able to see it there. So we're going to find out. But this is the process. Now, the idea is to eventually actually have a form on the website where you could just enter all that info, upload a file, and it would generate the pull request for you, but we're not there yet. That's a project to come in the future. Um, all right, let's, I don't know how long this is going to take. Right, so let's actually go look now. Let's go look at what's happening here on Netlify. So here is on Netlify. Can I, what do I do? Deploys, deploy preview, fixed reference, pending review. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> I don't know Netlify. I'm like so tired. Uh, okay. Ah, oh, yeah, this is it. So I can see it's, we can see right now that it is attempting to create a preview. This is what I was looking for a preview for this particular pull request. Um, oh, and I see, I can accept. So I think, I think I have to accept it building a preview for if it doesn't recognize the author, that's fine. No wonder that's what it was asking me for, for 139. Okay, let's go back to the pull request. It's working on it. Okay, so any questions or comments anyone wants to ask? Is anybody feeling inspired to later today or tomorrow try to bring over a coding challenge and c contributions that go with it? You know, say in the chat. Um, ultimately, this might be something that I just need to pay some folks who work on different coding train projects hourly to go through and do. Klein has already been doing this for a lot of what's on the website so far, but I will sort of see. Um, all right, just waiting for this. Muting myself for a second. Checking my phone. Um, come on, build process. else can I poke around here? Maybe I should set up the domain. Auto publishing is on. Deploy settings, notifications. I guess I should look at this stuff later.
Oh, it says completed. Deploy successful for this pull request. Oh yeah, the deploy preview works. Okay. So now I can go to this deploy preview. And uh, challenges, prime spiral. Rah! Why does it not show up? Is this related to the NPM run clean thing? So I don't know why it's not there. So this is this the 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 contributions have some sort of issue. Let me do git checkout clean. Let me look at this. So let's look at it locally. Oh, was there a Oh, there was an error. There's an error. What did I mess up? Okay, so I made an error. Content, videos, showcase. That looks fine. Oh, you made a spreadsheet. That's great. Okay, so wait, I have, so uh, let me come back to that. Um, why don't you open an issue? Would you mind opening an issue BTB331 with the link to that spreadsheet? And I'll come back and look at it. Um, so what did I what did I mess up? Oh no! Wait, what? What is going on? Okay, hold on. Let's look at let's look at the Mandelbaum. Yeah, what's different here? What's wrong? All right, let's take a look. Uh, what's wrong? NPM run clean. Oh, sorry. Started standing in front of this. Okay. Let's look at the tests again. Okay, I'm still getting weird errors. What did I do wrong? Oh, I know what the issue is. Oh, this is so dumb. So I switched branches around and there's this empty. So let me just remove that. So that that's actually a totally separate issue. Nothing to do. That was just like because I switched branches around and those files aren't there in a different branch, but Mac the Mac OS will leave the folders there but empty. So that's fine. So th there were actually no errors there. And probably just a run clean issue. Oh, excuse me, didn't mute myself before that sneeze. So I think there's an issue that I, I think there's a big bug with the website and the passenger showcase that I'm finding, I think, but we're about to see. Okay, so now this is the deploy preview. This is the deploy preview. I want the local one. This is the local one. 
Oh, yikes. Oh, because that's not there yet. All right, all right. Relax, everybody. We're going to challenges. Starfield. No, not Starfield. Prime Spiral. Yeah, see? It shows up here. So it definitely is working, and I did it correctly. But why does the deploy preview not show it? Um, all right, so I'm going to file an issue about this. All right. All right, let's with um, requiring NPM run clean um, when showcase submissions are added. Uh, added um, the preview for this pull request does not show the submission so which is here um, okay When I look at the branch locally, I also do not see the submission unless I run npm run clean first. And then, might be happening say is there a netlify setting i can change let me tag rune do you know if there is a Netlify setting I can change to force npm run clean. Um, in theory, I was saying there maybe is no problem if the showcase project shows up upon merge, but it would be really nice to be able to double check the preview before merging. Okay. This is what I've written. <laughs> I don't think my locally when I, when I host the branch locally on my laptop The submission shows up after I run npm run clean. All right. So this is a, I'm discovering all these interesting issues and things with the website. So I am going to post this comment here. Um, and then uh, we will sort of sort that out. I don't want to merge this right now because I would like to understand what's going on. Let's just double check it again yep it's really not there no matter how many times I refresh under deploy details oh, this is permalink oh no yeah that's the preview 
Publish deploy. One more open deploy preview. What is? I don't know what that would do. Options. Retry. Clear cache and retry deploy. Let's see what this does. So I'm trying it again, but clearing the cache. We'll see if that does anything. Hmm. I don't know how long this is going to take. I wonder if we can force it just to run clean in here. Right? It, the build settings are npm run build. Deploy previews. Any pull request enabled. Edit settings. Hmm. I don't know what other settings here I need to check. It's running the stuff again. Did, uh, did the spreadsheet come in as an issue? Let's see. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. So um, this is great. So if anybody wants to, ah, Dishrike is working on the clock. Thank you. Amazing. Um, one thing we should note is that some of these are already done, although I'm sure things could be improved in terms of adding time codes and things like that. But um, that's great. So thank you for this. This is fantastic. Um, Let's use this. Um, okay, come on, come on. I just want to, this is the last thing I'm going to check before I move on. Oh, it's already, oh my God, 4.30. Let's see, where is, uh, go here to deploys. Still doing this one. Just want this one last one to finish. So close. Oh, look at this, details. Where does that go? Success, success, success. Build. Yeah, it's running build, which makes sense. Looks like it finished. But it has not, lo like, the log does not actually say finished yet. Let's play this game. Match the pairs. Oh my God, what? Oh my God, this is crazy. They all look the same to me. What am I missing? Oh. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to look for like secret patterns. Okay. Um, otter, okay. Mountain, mountain, okay. Uh, rainbow, okay. How's my, how's my memory doing? Oh, that was lucky. Woohoo! I did it! 12 moves. That's pretty good. Did it finish? <sighs> okay. 
Looks like it's done to me. Let's play this game one more time. Let's see if I can beat 12 moves. Coffee Devil. Light bulb. Coffee, coffee. Surfer. Taco. Taco, taco. Clapping. Surfer, surfer. Light bulb, light bulb. Clapping, clapping. Twelve again. A pair's puzzle sorter. Yeah, this would be a fun um, coding challenge to make a little memory game. <laughs> Why hasn't this finished yet? I just want to close the loop on this last thing. Deploy preview is taking a really long time. I'm not going to cancel it. Oh, wait. Oh, 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 here we go. Look at this. Live, we're seeing it happen. Starting to deploy, creating deploy. One new function to upload. A pair's puzzle solver. Yeah, that could be fun. Come on, finish deploying. So close. Ooh, I like this. <laughs> Some are already done. Okay. Come on. Build complete. It says it's complete. It's got to finish its post-processing. Can I play this game one more time? I guess I have to get lucky to beat 12. Oof, it's going to be hard. Oh my god, are these all going to be cats? Oh, I'm going to do terrible. Oh, I've already forgotten. Oh, I got that right. Oh, no. No. <laughs> oh, I was doing so well until we got the... Oh, those aren't even the same. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's going to be a lot more than 12, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, my weakness is clearly cats. That's the same one. It's the same image. Oh, it, it finished. It built. Okay. It built it. All right. Let's see. Right, everybody? Uh, videos, challenges. There, it showed up. Okay. Um. Clear cash. And what was it? Clear cache and retry deploy.
Okay. Well, that's good to know that if it's not showing up in the preview, I can always then go to my Netlify dashboard and redeploy the preview with clearing cache. <sighs> um. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been getting good sleep this week. I got too many things going on. So, uh, but I'm glad that I did this stream today. I don't know if it was everything I always hoped it would be in terms of showing the new website, but I, I definitely got a little bit of a better understanding myself. Um, I know what needs to be done, and I'm just going to keep working on and iterating over the site um, myself. And anybody who wants to help, um, I would say all you need to do is like before, what I would suggest to you is if you want to work on something for the website, like maybe you want to like rewrite the FAQ <laughs> or like fix up some of the guide or make screenshots for the guide. I mean, I, well, any of those contributions are welcome, but what I would ask is first file an issue saying that you want to work on this because what I want to avoid is one, you doing a lot of work for something that like is maybe like maybe I know that actually we're going to remove that page or something. I don't want you to waste your effort on something, so file an issue first. Um, and also, you know, it could be that if two people are you know two people are interested, we you know we don't want we don't want two people to um, replicate each other's work and then somebody's uh, um, contribution can't be merged. So okay, so thank you for joining me. Are there any last questions before I shut this down to ask about? The website. I'm going to give it give it a minute here. I'm going to let, let people ask any questions in the chat. Play this music that I haven't played in a while. I really want to change this to a custom domain now. I'm not going to do that today. What's funny is I was like. I was, I meant to make a list of all the things I need to do for the wave function collapse video and work on some of them during the stream, but, uh, okay. So this is a great question. So D Shrike asks, am I understanding it right that forking is not needed to contribute? Not exactly. So I think I didn't need to fork it because, um, I'm sorry, I'm getting like a Discord notification, but I can't see where that message came in. Um, I am not needing to, if, if you're trying to reach me in Discord, post to the live chat channel. That's all that I'm seeing right now. And I assume it's probably just some other nonsense notification from a different server. Um, so when I've been doing all this work, I'm not forking it. I just create a new branch because I am an owner of this particular repo. So I make a new branch in the same repo and then that can become my pull request or I can merge it. For you to do this, it you will have to have your own fork first. So, um, But it should step you through that process. I don't have another GitHub login I can do right now, but essentially if you follow the same steps that I did through the web interface, it would give you the prompt to create a fork first. And if you're not using the web interface, you'll want to fork it first. So you won't actually want to clone. You'll want to click fork and then clone your fork locally. So yeah, so, so that's a really, really good question and something that I did not address clearly in my demonstration. Oh, rating time. Sure. <laughs> I'm surprised that any of you, I, any of you have uh, 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 energy to be online on Twitch past this moment. I feel like this is the most boring stream I've ever done, but it is also critical and important. Let's give, I'm, I'm just, the reason why I, um, well, I can look at my notifications now to see if that was something. Uh, um, okay, so I'm looking at my, oh yeah, we can um, raid Hard Rock Hope. Um, all right who is playing Persona 5. So all the channels that I follow that are coding related are all offline. But Hard Rock Hope, who does uh, gaming streams, um, they are uh, um, like and, 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 and various like entertainment related podcasts that I listen to. They are playing 
the game right now, Persona 5 Royal First Playthrough Part 2. Uh, Brooklyn Z play a lot of classic JRPGs for the first time. Um, maybe a few other things. They do a Final Fantasy podcast. So how do we feel? We're gonna shall we raid Hard Rock Hope again today? Everybody good with that? Okay. Uh, Um, where do I do this? <laughs> oh, Twitch. <sighs> Stream dashboard. Oh my God, I'm so brain dead right now. Creator dashboard. Stream manager. Raid channel. Hard Rock Hope. Start raid. Okay. Now remember, it's very important to me that the coding train Twitch is known as the friendliest and most supportive raiders in all the land. So be kind, be generous, be friendly, um, and uh, enjoy this raid. And I'll be back. I hope that I'm going to be able to fit one more stream in, maybe even do a coding challenge before I leave for Copenhagen. But I have a lot planned for July. So July will be, and August hopefully will be, a good good coding train month. Stay tuned. Thank you for being on the train with me. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy this raid. I'm going to click raid now, and I'll see you all later.